Hi, I'm Martin Sentmanet, and today I'm presenting on rotavirus. So rotavirus may be a name that you have not heard before because its common name is the stomach flu. The reason for this is because a lot of its symptoms or some of its symptoms are similar to influenza. So one of these uh, is fever, but the stomach flu and influenza are very different diseases. So if influenza is left untreated, it can be fatal, whereas rotavirus um, if left untreated, should take care of itself in about 10 days. It's also known as gastroenteritis because it infects the gastrointestinal tract and causes abdominal pain. One characterization of this virus is that it affects mostly infants and children. This doesn't mean that it affects adults, but its prevalence is among infants and children. Um, there's another virus called norovirus, and if an adult has symptoms similar to this virus, a lot of the time it is norovirus and not rotavirus. So even with adults with similar symptoms, it could be a different disease. Another characterization of this disease is that it, it, its prevalence, at least in the United States, is mostly in the winter and the spring. This is not the same in other parts of the world. Some parts of the world, it is equally prevalent in all, part, uh, all times of the year. But in the United States, it's a winter disease. So the structure of this virus is first that it is non-enveloped. That means it doesn't have that lipid layer that makes itself look like a human cell. It is presenting as a virus, but an interesting part of its structure is that it has a triple capsid structure. So here is a picture of the virus. On the right, we have the inner capsid, and the inner capsid is made up of 12 pentameric dimers. You can't see the the pentamers, uh, this this little red thing is a sensor, the pentam uh, one of the pentamers. But uh, here is a, a picture of the dimers you can see, um, and that makes a total of 120 proteins. The intermediate capsid is similar; it's made up of pentamers, but they're pentameric hexamers. So again, you can't really see the the pentamers, but you can see the hexamers here, and the hexamers uh, have six proteins each giving a total of 780 proteins just in the intermediate capsid. The large outer capsid is covered in glycoproteins. And of course, these glycoproteins are important for attaching to human cells and transmitting that viral information into the cell um, so that it infects the cell. So the, here is some pictures of the virus. Here is the virus on the left. You have a picture of the virus conglomerating on a cell. And on the right here is a very good um, electron micrograph. Of course, these are colored, but this is an electron micrograph of those glycoproteins on, on the outside. They're very, uh, they stick out and it makes it really want to attach to cells and infect them. So some symptoms of this disease are vo vomiting, fever, and stomach pain. Uh, but the main symptom is diarrhea. This is an uh, intestinal disease, and it is passed through uh, the intestines. So it causes a lot of diarrhea uh, because the body is trying to expel the virus. It knows it's in the intestinal tract, and diarrhea uh, is the best way just to get stuff rid of, uh, well, get rid of stuff in the intestinal tract. Some secondary symptoms are loss of appetite and dehydration. This, of course, happens from the vomiting and the diarrhea. So the way this is transmit, uh, transmitted um, is not very surprising considering it affects children. It goes through the intestines, out through the fecal matter, and to the mouth somehow. So it only goes through that gastrointestinal tract. And children are more likely probably to be bad at wiping or if they're infants, maybe sticking their hands in their diapers or something. So that's probably why it affects them more. Um, it can be affected, uh, well, transmitted through food, through water, but a lot of times it's probably in play areas. You see this carrier here. He is touching bars. Who knows where he's been? He's touching bars too, and it's easily transmitted. Children like to touch their mouth. They'll touch other children's mouths, um, and that uh, play areas are uh, like a prime spot in winter months for transmission of this disease. There's been a paper published by the World Health Organization called The Global Seasonality of Rotavirus Infection, and it postulates that maybe since this is a winter disease, that it has a respiratory mode of transmission. Um, this is a good hypothesis, but some problems they point out in the paper 
is that uh, in other parts of the world, as I mentioned, this disease is not actually a winter disease at all, and it happens all throughout the year. But it, it is a good hypothesis to think about why it occurs in the winter um, in the United States. So the way this virus is treated is that you actually just wait it out. Um, with that said, you can treat the symptoms of the virus. So since one of the main symptoms is diarrhea, you want to make sure you're not getting dehydrated or your child is not getting dehydrated. So one thing to cut out from the di diet is mucus forming foods. And one of the main things is milk. So milk is highly mucus forming. With infants, you don't really have an option around that. But uh, with children, you want to try to cut out that milk because it does not make uh, the abdomen feel good and it increases vomiting. Gatorade is good because it has electrolytes and replenishes the electrolyte imbalance after vomiting and diarrhea. But lemon lime Gatorade is really not a good flavor and your child needs something better like fruit punch or maybe the blue uh, raspberry. And Pedialyte is also an excellent choice for infants because it, it restores that electrolyte imbalance in infants. So the way this the virus should be prevented is through good hygiene, mostly washing hands, especially after using the bathroom. Of course, as many times as you might tell kids, they won't do this, especially if they're under two years old. So there are some vaccines available for infant, infants that are about 70% effective. This is throughout childhood too. Um, even though that at least 30% chance of getting the virus, um, that's still 70% more effective than if you didn't have the vaccine at all. And a good thing about the vaccine is whether your child is happy, as in the case on the left, or if, if your child just doesn't want to take the vaccine, uh, as in the case on the right, the vaccine will work eff uh, effectively well in either case. Somehow that didn't draw a circle. But um, some side effects of the vaccine are um, vomiting and diarrhea. This isn't a surprise because the vaccine is nothing other than uh, viral proteins of the virus itself. But this vomiting and diarrhea should go away within a couple hours, which is much better than 10 days of your eight-month-year-old um, diarrhea every day. A serious side effect of the vaccine is intussusception. This is intestinal blockage. It's when the intestines invaginate or just... Uh, fold into one another. You can see this on the right. This is extremely painful. Your uh, child, children will cry like every 15 minutes um, and it causes bleeding, but more importantly, it blocks the intestines from actually functioning uh, and, and it can be fatal if not treated immediately. This can be treated in uh, less severe cases by anema or in other cases by surgery. Fortunately, it's only happens in one in 20,000 to one in 100,000 of those who take the vaccine. And intussusception is something that happens randomly in children anyway. So there's not really a known um, reason why it happens more often with this vaccine. Um, but the, it should not uh, dissuade you from having the vaccine. Another uh, side effect of the vaccine or any vaccine in general is allergic reactions. And this is something, again, that's random and can't be controlled. So the prevalence of rotavirus in the United States is about 3 million cases per year. This data, however, was um, published before the vaccine was in use. There actually isn't any data after the vaccine has been widely used. So the, the number may uh, be about the same, but hopefully it's weighed down if people have actually been using the vaccine. Most About 95% is the estimated number of children that get infected before they are five years old. So you may, may remember, I definitely remember getting infected by rotavirus several times in my childhood, um, and I didn't have the vaccine. Some cost of just this virus is $1 billion. This is the cost to hospitals, to doctors, uh, to uh, patients, but it's also the cost to those parents that have to take off work just to get their child to the hospital to wait for them or uh, help them when they are sick. Because if they're about six or seven, they might be fine alone. But if they're less than two years old, it can be a serious disease if they're not uh, taken care of. So here's some references of the sources I used for my presentation. Um, I want to thank you for watching this pre presentation and make sure that you use hand sanitizer and uh, any other methods uh, today and throughout uh, the rest of this winter season to make sure you don't get uh, this virus. Thank you.